I don't think that Darren, so Darren's in the wrong seat. Then. All right, friends, are ready for a pledge? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure, Steve, whatever you say. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, all. welcome everyone. A roll call, please, Kathy. All right, and we're going to spice it up a little bit. Uh, Pew, Karis. Look at you. <laughs> uh, McDonald is absent. A Galogli. Here. Deskin. Here. Oh, could reverse that order. Bergbauer. Here. <laughs> Bartleson. Here. And Sabin. Present. We have a quorum. I right, don't thank you. Bill, please. Please play with me, everybody. Uh, dear God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you. Uh, we ask for peace. We ask for peace in our world, peace in our nation, and peace in our state, and Lord, especially our city. We ask that the residents of Lockport would love each other and help each other, respect each other, Lord, and, and this, be a, this would be known as a city of peace. And we thank you, God, that you are here. We thank you for tonight, and we especially thank you that Lockport now has a crumble cookie. In your name, mm -hmm. amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. Thanks, Bill. Friday. That's a private opening for just you, Kent. Yes, private opening. <laughs> Open to public on Friday. All right, my friends, uh, any uh, liaison reports? Um, just a couple of quick reminders. Um, the, 26th, the 26th of May um, is our first uh, Roxy movie night. It's a double feature. Um, May 29th. The Heroes banners that have been uh, being <clears throat> sold, um, I think they've almost got them all sold. So May 29th um, at City Hall at 10 a.m. is the first dedication. June 2nd is the first Friday in the park, and June 5th is the first car show. Right on. Thank you, Renee. And Bill's got anything? We have uh, Main Street is having their annual uh, cleanup day this Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be great if most of us could show up. I will be there. I'm always out of town, and not purposely. <clears throat> what time? It's from 8 to noon. 8 a.m. to noon. Down at the scale house. Yeah, down by the scale house. It's a really good event. Yeah. 8 to 12, I think it runs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Baron. Anything I do else? not have a report, but I understand that Brent would like to report about the Route 7 uh, resurfacing. Thank you, Jair. Um, the Route 7, um, long, 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 I feel like already resurfacing. Feels like it's already taken a couple weeks. Um, but one of the things that they're asking the city of Lockport to consider would be to actually resurface, so actually put the pavement down overnight. Um, we've talked about that internally. We feel like it's probably a, a very good solution um, in that it will provide less uh, direct impact to our <coughs> residents during the day, res less impact to our motorists, um, it'll be a little bit safer. Um, however, it will be impactful overnight. Um, the plan would be for two nights and it will be overnight. Um, it's gonna be starting around eight o'clock and it's gonna go to four or 5 a.m. Um, so you, there will be noise, there will be backup alarms, there will be trucks. Um, however, when, when um, you, know, you get up to get out onto the, tra on, out onto the roadway with traffic, it'll be completely done. So um, when that's going to be done, we're being told it's going to be after Memorial Day, so not next week, but the following week. I will um, get a, an official date and get that out to everybody. But just wanted to let, um, let everybody up here, also our residents know that is the intent. It will sit uh, essentially the way it is for another week, week and a half, and then overnight it will be paved. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, is that everything? Uh, got a couple items. Uh, <clears throat> the police department did their uh, bike servicing event a couple weekends ago, and were able to service 100 bikes. Uh, they also did the uh, pull a plane fundraiser over at Lewis, and came in second out of 30 teams. Nice. <laughs> well, we'll try to get first next year. <laughs> Strong towns, right? Um, then a couple of uh, upcoming items. On Thursday, May 18th at noon, the 42nd annual Will County Law Enforcement Memorial Ceremony will take place on the lawn at the old Will County Courthouse in downtown Joliet. This event recognizes the 37 fallen heroes who served Will County. 
or I'm sorry, who served in Will County. And then on uh, the Friday, May 19th, Special Olympics fundraiser, Cop on a Rooftop, takes place from 5 a.m. till 1 p.m. Uh, during that time, Lockport officers will be at the Dunkin' Donuts on 9th Street and the Dunkin' Donuts located on State Street, helping to raise money for a great cause. Uh, and then finally, thank you to Rich for hosting me on Monday uh, as I got to know a little bit more about the police department. What, what was the date again for the Dunkin' Donuts? It's Friday, May 19th. Yeah, coming up fast. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan. Appreciate it. All right. Well, if that's uh, that's everything. Actually, Blair, please. I, I need to just uh, re just re uh, update on the um, beautification um, recognitions. Um, last time I reported that we are going to um, make this a little bit more exciting by having uh, first place. Uh, uh, win a hundred dollars uh, second place um, or a hundred and fifty no a hundred seventy five and fifty we're going to make that as um, gift certificates to the restaurants in in town so that way we can um, generate uh, uh, people that maybe haven't had an opportunity to check out some of the restaurants in downtown Lockport this will be a great opportunity so that's how we're going to modify it and update uh, the beautification awards. Thank right you. On. We're still taking those in. And then the other liaison item, Mayor, uh, just everyone's perusal. I think I emailed this out to everybody and I put copies on your stations this evening. It's just the liaison layouts for um, the committees that we have. And um, if there's any questions, we'll uh, have Brittany start making the scheduled meetings with the mayor um, starting in June. Yeah, sounds good. Jonathan already jumped it, man. He was already out there. He was so. already on it. Mm -hmm. oh, very good. All right, thanks everyone. All right, so uh, we have uh, some appointments on the agenda here tonight. So M1 is uh, looking for appointment of Kyle Quinn and a reappointment of Aaron Peters to the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, each for a three-year term. So do, 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 any questions, concerns about that one? Are we okay with the consent or? This would be the approval of resolution 23032 uh, reconfirming Aaron Peters um, for Darren's seat and then adding um, the new guy, Kyle Quinn. All right. Next one is uh, reappointments of uh, Nick Ariega and Ron Liff for the uh, Heritage and Architecture Commission. You guys okay with this one? Any thoughts? All right, so we'll do consent on that. Uh, Joe Piper uh, back on the pension board. Everybody okay there? Uh, Joel Young for police commissioners. Start rotating in a, a new cat there. Is everybody all right with Joel? Uh, where's he? Where's he from? Uh, other jo than Lockport. I think he lives over by you. Um, really? Yeah. He he's lives on Darren Drive. Uh, Duran Duran Drive. Yeah, maybe that was my connection. Darren Drive. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He lives near Pat McDonald. I know that because they talked to him. Oh, it's over by Pat. Okay. Yeah, I think he is. All right. No, good guy. Uh, do you know anything about him? Did you read up on him? I know you can. Oh. Yeah, he was uh, basically the he was basically Elliot Ness. He was the uh, on the uh, I'm just drawing a blank. The IRS. He was on the police uh, for IRS. Yeah, so you can always ask him what what, what do you think they're doing with those eighty seven thousand new agents? And uh, and why do you guys have uh, enough ammunition for a small army? So those are questions you can ask Joel. All right. So, but no, he does. Like Christina said, he has a, he has a good resume. Um. Looking for reappointments of Catherine Round, Ray Sugg, and Lance McCullough, uh, uh, and the appointment of Darren for the International Code uh, Council Board of Appeals. Pretty good there. All right, and then uh, that's it. That's all the appointments for we have this time. Thank all right, my friends, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, what do you got there, Ben? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, CA1 is uh, seeking approval of a professional service agreement with V3 companies and their environmental uh, division uh, to help us with a phase two site assessment of 1728 South State Street uh, in the amount not to exceed $26,000. Um, there was a phase one on this little history on this uh, property. There was a phase one done by a developer. If you recall, we actually um, help fund part of the phase one uh, by council approval with the developer who was looking at properties on east and west sides of State Street, the old Tassone, Tassone properties. 
Um, the gentleman that owned those properties passes away. His uh, children um, are not uh, in any state to uh, be able to rehab them. And so there is a developer that is going to be doing some residential down there. But when they evaluated the phase one, there was one parcel in particular that they obviously saw some underground tanks on. Um, they decided to go no further. We were seeking uh, to learn more about it. Uh, the family has approached the city in regards to taking the parcel um, and hopefully getting it reapproved and um, getting it back on the tax rules. Um, but I would just wanted to proceed cautiously and would um, you know appreciate the opportunity to spend some TIF money to further evaluate with a phase two. I don't want to um, have the city take it on if we don't um, uh, know what's going on there. And we need to be able to learn more about what the actual cost uh, would be. I also have a grant from the Will County CED that would um, is offering up to $100,000 to pay for the remediation if they um, uh, they're obviously going to find the tanks and get cost estimates put together in regards to what those fixes are. Um, certainly, TIF funds would also be eligible for that if we needed it. Uh, this is a good example of what TIF funds can be used for. And really, the ultimate goal is to, um, you know, get this parcel that's dilapidated and um, uh, an eyesore in our entryways to have it come under someone else's control. We can decide what to do with it later. We can even just demo the building and make it a, um, a level parking lot for now until we get further information once we decide if we're going to take the ownership or not. And I wouldn't recommend any ownership by the city until it is cleaned and remediated and we all feel there's no further action um, from the EPA. Uh, I did ask Keith from the V3 Environmental to come out tonight if there was any technical questions. Uh, I'm not an engineer, although I do like to play one on TV every once in a while. Um, but in this scenario, um, I wanted to also update the council. Um, I did put in a grant for $25,000 for this phase uh, two environmental as well. Uh, I can't officially announce anything yet, but I think we're looking good. And I'm looking for council's consent to go ahead and proceed. We would wait um, to find out if we got the $25,000 funding before, you know, hopefully we would learn in the next 30 days or so. Um, if we don't get it, I would proceed with the TIF funds. Uh, if we do get it, um, we would get $25,000 from the state to um, cover the majority of the phase two. Okay. Questions, thoughts, concerns? And then Keith's here if anybody wants to. That's is what. It, uh, okay. Is this property the part of the study that we had done by yeah. all the Tassoni projects uh, or properties? And right. is this the only one that's negative compared to the other ones? So the other part, there were several parcels that had some other issues, but the developer is taking care of those. They purchased them, so they're, therefore they are now their, um, their concerns, and they have agreed to move forward with the remediation levels on those uh, parcels. This one in particular had several tanks underground. It was an old service station. They just they didn't see much value to it. It's kind of on a parcel on the east side of the road at uh, 18th and State. Really not not easily used with the development across the street for residential or even the one that's on the east side. Um, so they just decided it just wasn't worth their return, their ROI, uh, to get engaged in it any further. Um, and then that's when we stepped in and thought, well, you know, what are we doing here? And then when I talked to the family attorney, they had offered it to us, but I felt like um, even though it may cost us a little money, we need to further investigate it before we decide what else we want to do with it. Certainly we come back to the council as those stages play out and <clears throat> let the council make decisions on if we proceed or not. So this would be the conclusion to that original study, or basically, uh, I mean, the end of it since everything else? Yeah, the phase started. two, right? We, we helped fund the phase one for all those parcels. This is one of those that we did co-fund. The phase two would give us more information and, and formalize cost estimates to follow the path that needs to be done to, uh, to see if we're going to do that or not. All right, anything else, my friends? We good with consent then? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we got annexation uh, amendment for lot six at Lockport Square. What do you got, Sonny? Yes, thank you, um, Mayor and members of the City Council. So basically, the amendment to the annexation agreement concerning this lot six is to, one, ratify the zoning of this property that was done back in 2022 last year from C2 to C3, and two, to allow the use of the 2021 International Building Code. So I'm going to, there should be a slide with, I can't move the oh. slide. There oh, you there go. it Sorry. is. So this is the self-storage unit that um, the City Council approved, um, both the concept plan and the development plan to allow for the 55 feet uh, four-story building. 
And um, after the plan was approved, uh, we, the um, developers realized that in the industry of building these self-storage you know, facilities, that the 2021 International Building Code was better than the 2015 you know, IBC that we have right now that we adopted. So uh, both the building inspector and the fire district representative have no problems using the more up-to-date 2021 IBC for the facilities uh, construction. So when we looked into that, we realized that the annexation agreement should have been amended when we rezoned that lot six from C2 to C3 because the annexation agreement called for the whole development to be in C2. So the annexation amendment will be to ratify the rezoning and to allow the use of the 2021 IBC code for that construction. Uh, right now, um, it is recommended that the public hearing be held on June 7th to allow for any public members to appear, you know, either support or object the amendment to the annexation agreement. Uh, with that, I would be more than happy to answer any questions. May I anything? All right, so we'll, uh, okay, next step so is public hearing then. Yes, yeah, it will be a public hearing on June 7th. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, lastly, uh, Brent, what do you got? This evening, uh, item PW-1 is in re uh, regards to our water rate study. Um, this evening, we're asking for council's consideration to move forward with evaluating a uh, potential to adjust some um, ways that we um, collect, collect revenues. So some of the options out there, um, they vary in, in, um, in range from adjusting tap on fees to adjusting um, future rates to adjusting rates for non-residents to adjusting or to no, to no adjustment of rates. Um, there's a lot of different options out there and what this study is going to do is to try to align what we've done to date, which is to evaluate our CIP, evaluate all the improvements that, that we would like to do, um, present those to council, and once council and um, you know staff have determined this is the, the avenue that we want to move forward with, so for instance, a treatment plant. A treatment plant's going to be a sizable impact to the city. It's going to be a sizable need, um, also with a sizable price tag at some point here over the next five, 10 years. Um, we want to make sure that we're ready and we want to make sure that we have evaluated all different options and that um, if industry needs to uh, take a little bit larger of a piece of that, that industry does, for instance. Um, again, this rate study is, is strictly a first step just to kind of evaluate what we have um, on the uh, horizon as far as needs and then to offer solutions. And um, it's going to be a, a long process, but this is the first step. So council's or we're asking council's consideration to move forward with um, this first step, which is the $25,100 water sewer rate study from Baxter and Woodman. Um, again, this doesn't lock us into anything other than um, evaluating our needs versus, um, or our, I should say, uh, staff's, um, I want to say needs, but recommendations. our recommendations, thank you, thank you, Ben. So our recommendations and then um, evaluating those against what we're able to uh, essentially fund. So I know it's always tricky to, to um, you know, to, to lock things in. I just want to be very clear that none of, nothing is being locked in by this. This is just offering solutions, options uh, for council to consider. Resolution number 23-048 would be to accept the proposal for the water and sewer rate study. The rate study will take uh, several months, so I would look for late uh, summer, early fall to come back with some potential options. And it's Thoughts, it's questions. Um, it's the law. We have to have the water and sewer funds fund themselves. They have to um, support themselves. So whatever decisions you make for infrastructure, we need to come up with revenues to support it. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. And this would just be for the proposal? Yeah, this is for the study and the work to come back with, hey, you can do different size meters, you can do different size rates, you can do non-residence rates, you can, if you need uh, this, this many, uh, PE amounts to serve and MGDs and a million gallons a day, 
all the services, it, it'll bring everything in. And they will also coordinate with finance and our billing department because that's where all the water and sewer fees, you know, mostly come from, although development and certain things are also part of that income stream. Um, but it will take almost everything into effect and then give us a document and recommendations for um, the council to decide on what we would want to do to support what's needed. And then as Brent, I believe you said, it also looks at the big projects that we've got on the table and factors those in. So if it's like, okay, if you guys were going to do water treatment plant, it's going to take this amount of money. Correct. So you could not do the water treatment plant and then we don't have to do anything different with fees perhaps. So that's the way all those kind of things is what gets presented. Correct. This is, this is really about throwing all of the mm -hmm. options out on the table and having a good discussion about, um, just about the different ways of, of, addressing some of the needs that are out there the one of the things that we have to determine is and jr you, you probably can provide a little bit of input on this is how long do pipes last how long do we want to assume that pipes last duct and iron pipe does it last 50 years 70 years 100 years and you know based on those de determinations based on what we decide that helps us to know okay we need to plan for replacements every 70 years if we want to replace pipe every 70 years how much does that actually take? So it's, it really turns into a planning document and provides us, like I said, a lot of different options. Um, it's nothing more than, than a planning document to help us serve the residents and, and make sure that we're able to provide services without interruptions. And I think that's one of the pieces of language in here that Baxter and Woodman pointed out. I mean, really that is our number one goal is to make sure that we can provide uninterrupted service healthy, safe water, water, wastewater treatment to all of our residents and all of our businesses in perpetuity. It's a big ask and I know it, um, it's, it's difficult to quantify sometimes because there are a lot of EPA changes. That's what this looks at. This document looks at anything on the horizon. If phosphorus is one thing that's being thrown out as a treatment plant requirement, we're looking at, okay, if we have to remove phosphorus, that adds treatment in the amount of $250,000 um, to be added to a treatment plant facility. How do we potentially pay for that? And, you know, just, it, it really, like I said, just kind of gets everything out there and it's a big process. Okay. I, I just want to make sure that, that, you know, you, you and, and Lisa and Ben, I mean, you guys do a fantastic job of going through what we have today and, and looking forward. So it's just a matter of making sure that, you know, you feel that this is a value that B and W would uh, would deliver on, on 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 what this process would look like, and and it would be helpful outside of of the capacity of, of city staff and um, you know what what you do day to day and, and your and your staff. So, I think what they're able to do is they're able to provide in some other solutions that have worked elsewhere. So, they've done um, dozens, literally dozens of these over the last couple of years. Um, because everybody's in the same boat, you know, everybody's trying to find out how to make sure that they are in a good place to continue to provide service. And so they've been able to do this and they've, that's where kind of Ben mentioned as well, they've brought up a couple solutions that, you know, that we hadn't really thought of um, based on Lockport, but they had, they had really benefited some other communities. So again, it's, it's thinking a little bit outside the box, providing solutions that maybe we haven't thought of also providing solutions that we know work here that maybe didn't work elsewhere. So it's, um, it's, a, it's going to be a good, I think a good process. And to um, answer you directly, absolutely, I believe that it is a, a huge attribute to be able to have an outside group look at this and bring in, like I said, some of those other solutions um, to offer. One of the other things that this does is Bonnie Bray, Lockport Heights, you know, it, it looks at what the solutions are there. If we continue with them through 2030 and beyond, if we continue with the current rate structure, if we adjust rate structures, if we make sure everybody has meters, you know, again, all of those things will be evaluated in this document. So there's, there's a lot. We, we have a very, uh, very tricky um, water and sewer system here in Lockport because we have so many different kind of hands in the pie right now and that's what makes this, I think, even more valuable because it does, it really, it really lets us um, look at if Bonnie Bray 
again, if we were to take the treatment plant out, put a lift station in, and push all of our waste down to the division tr treatment plant, what options do we have? How does that impact us if we weren't? If we were to pick everything up at the north end and lift station it past the Bonnie Bray lift station, what options, how much money, costs, longevity, maintenance? Um, you know, that's what this talks, that's what this document will provide us. So, yep. All right. So we're all good? Consent? Okay. All righty. Any new business? I got, I just, it's just something to think about. Um, <clears throat> about 15, 16 years ago, we, we uh, the city hired a uh, new city manager or city, a city administrator. And at that time, uh, the city council would meet four times a, four times a month. One, one, one week would be a, 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 the committee meeting, what we call committee of the whole, then the next week was city council, then committee of the whole, then and city council, then the, the um, city administrator uh, at the time, Tim, Tim Schloniger, said, well, why don't we just go ahead and combine both the meetings into one night? And um, so they did, okay? And then, and, and at that time, the, the, the order of the meeting was always um, city council meeting, the business meeting, and then and the workshop meeting thereafter. Um, things changed circa 2011 or so um, when um, the city council meeting, the actual business meeting, it was every single member of the council would go ahead and say something about each and every um, agenda item they're going to be voting on, and then there was a rebuttal. And so what they had was that during the committee, the whole meetings, they had people out sitting out there in the um, audience that want to hear about their annexation or whatever the business well they were here and that's when meetings used to go to 11 30 12 o'clock at night and so things were flipped um, to where they would go ahead and enter in order to have people not wait through a very contentious business meeting uh, to flip things to where the committee the whole went first and then then the city council um, uh, meetings w went later um, and so what I've observed over the past several years is, is that the, the business meetings aren't very contentious, okay? And um, usually they get over in five, five to 10 minutes. And um, so what I'm proposing is that we flip it back to the city council meeting goes first and then the committee of the whole. So then what happens is, and so in the, in the lineup of things, is is the very first thing we do on a on a meeting is finish the previous meeting uh, and then just move move forward basically just flip just flip the meetings and then in the in the, the odd times that um we might have to go ahead and um do a business meeting first maybe one time in the next four years um, I'd recommend so what I just recommend is maybe we can just try just flipping go to city council meeting first and then the committee of the whole so then we just finish the business and the people to come here for the vote okay am I gonna so that's just a suggestion y'all can think about it and maybe we can talk about it again in a couple of weeks yeah that's fine I Darren had brought this up to me a couple of weeks ago we talked about it and it made sense I swear though man you and I flipped the meetings when we got here did you look into it i thought we did it because there was some it had to do with contention or like oh, I, it was made it was, sense it was it was um prior that's fine prior. I, I i have the memory of annette so i, I don't know well I'm, I, uh, and, and we all know who the people were that were the contentious <clears throat> ones so. Uh, so that's good so it makes sense i think the one thing it really makes a lot of sense on is that we have a conversation at committee of the whole citizens people proposing, you know, uh, petitioning, and then they come back next two weeks to hear their vote, but they got to sit through sometimes a very long committee of the whole, and they're like, oh, please just get to my vote. So it makes sense to flip it. I, I don't have a problem with it, but why don't you guys noodle it? If you see any red flags, just get back to us. Otherwise, we can, that's something we can put on the agenda in the you know, next month or two. Yep. In the case where we have something come up that needs to get dealt with, immediately i mean i think that's one of the advantages of the current setup is that it can come up and committee the whole and get voted on 
that night? If yeah. It was an emergency? It, it, it was something that was uh, true, was that we could talk about it at committee of the whole and then throw it on a vote. I think it's happened like one or two times. Or two times. What we can in just emergency. do is, is in, in the event that that happens, we just flip it that night. Okay. okay. And, um, you know, we just make it an amendment to the, the, the procedure that one night. So, yeah, I've been yeah, a, good, uh, good point. You know, a whole 45 minutes of meetings so far. So, <laughs> no, yeah. but I you, take my opinion, you made a, you, you made, you made a valid point. <laughs> and I think, I, you know, staff has no, no preference. Either way is fine. And I think you made a good comment. The committee of the whole was meant for debate. Um, the city council is meant for action. There is no, Sonny would tell you, there's no statute that requires. The debate uh, at committee of the whole. So, if there was a, some emergency, we could put something on as action, discuss it that night, and vote on it as long as it was published 48 hours in advance. So, we could do that too, Darren. We wouldn't have to necessarily yeah. swip it. So, yeah, the, the staff are here to serve any way you want to do it. So, not yeah, a problem. Okay. So, yeah, it's just just noodle it, and if you don't think of any reason not to, then we'll probably just flip it. I'm thinking, you know, if we're going to skip a meeting, the first meeting of July, maybe when we come back from July, if everyone's okay with it in June, we'll make that happen at the second meeting in July, and we'll be off to the new format then. Okay. In my past experience, the only thing that really gets us long is executive session. So mm -hmm. they would still have that as part of the There would be a motion council. to go in, or how would that be handled, so? So for executive session, since it's an exception to the Open Meetings Act, you could have it during the committee of the whole meeting. You could okay. have it during the city council meeting. You know, you as long as there's a motion to adjourn and the you know the citation is made to why we're going to executive session, you could go in either of the meeting. The issue is if you want to take an action um, for whatever deliberation or discussion you did in executive session, you have to make sure that it's on the agenda and it has to be on the city council mm -hmm. agenda, not the committee of the whole agenda. Yeah, I mean, we would monitor that, and obviously we always talk staff with the mayor in advance of the meetings anyway. Um, so yeah, I don't, it's perfectly manageable, and uh, we may have to make some changes to our Granicus templates and the agendas, but we'll take care of that once you make that decision. All right, my friends, thanks, thanks, Dan, for bringing that up. Okay, um, then if there's nothing else, we'll uh, look for a motion to adjourn. So, second. Okay, it was uh, uh, Joanne and JR. All in favor? Aye. Harris? Here. McDonald is absent. Gologly? Here. Bergbauer? Here. Duskin? Here. Bartleson? Here. Sabin? Here. We have a quorum. All right, looking for a motion to have a consent agenda. So moved. Christina? Second. Second by Matt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so tonight we're looking for a motion to approve the committee of the whole meeting minutes from May 3rd, the regular city council meeting minutes from May 3rd, our payroll period ending April 30th amendment to section 130.01 of the Lockport code of ordinances uh, correcting the definition of assault there's the final development plan review um, for the Panda Express and release of a bond and initial acceptance of site improvements for Homer tree so we're looking for a motion to approve second Renee and was that John or Matt? okay Matt, Matt. All right, looking for a uh, roll call, please. You got it. Um, a pew. Yay. <laughs> Karis? Yes. McDonald is absent. Gologly? Yes. Bergbauer? Yes. Deskin? Yes. Bartleson? Yes. Sabin? Yes. Motion passes. Hmm. She's going to start in the middle next time. <laughs> That's right. You just wait. Uh, uh, hey, I know. Mayor. All right. The bills list, I can answer any questions. It was in your packet. Uh, Lisa's not here tonight. We're looking for approval of FN1, which is the bills list through May 9th, 2023, with a motion to approve as presented. Yeah. And a motion out there for that? A motion. Second. All right. Renee, Christina, have a roll call, please. You got it. Q. Yes. Karis. Yes. McDonald is absent. Gologly. I abstain. The city of Lockport is paying my employer for some fire hydrants. Bergbauer? Yes. Deskin? Yes. Bartleson? Yes. Sabin? Yes. Motion passes. 
All right, next we're looking for a motion to approve Ordinance 23016, which is uh, amending our liquor um, license code. Um, had to do with the uh, size of mini sale alcohol and increasing the cap on M and N liquor licenses. Um, so we're looking for a motion to approve. All right, Renee, second. second JR. Were there any, any further questions on that? The only clarification is we made the change that we said we were going to make in there and got it cleaned up. So, okay. All right, thanks. For Darren's request. But then we'll do a roll call, please. All right, Pew. Yes. Harris? Yes. McDonald is absent. Gologly? Yes. Bergbauer? Yes. Deskin? Yes. Bartleson? Yes. Sabin? Yes. Motion passes. All right, and lastly, we're looking for a motion to approve the special use permit to allow expansion of the existing Lockport Cemetery for the property um, east of Madison, north of Seven. So ordinance 23017. I have to recuse myself and abstain from the vote because I am the president of the Cemetery Association. Okay. So moved. <laughs> so who's making a motion? That? I, Christina, I sorry. Second. And then uh, JR. All right, uh, discussion, thoughts, concerns? Yeah, I, I would uh, like to propose that moving forward um, that City Lockport is involved in the board at, in some capacity, um, whether it be an approval of a one board member that will report back to the city um, until you know, the, the, um, the cemetery no longer has the funds to, to run itself. Um, whether it's a, a, a person that's approved by the mayor then goes to the county for approval, um, but just to, so that the city is aware of what's going on so that they don't get into the kind of situation that they, yeah. they got in, or at least we're aware if they get into that kind of situation. I don't think there's any concern about the way it's being run now, but the city was pretty involved in the way it's being run now as far as putting people forward, so. Yeah, I, I know Darren can't uh, really speak on it. Um, I can give you a little history. Um, the city actually petitioned the county to change the membership and we've recruited our retired uh, 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 attorney, Ron Caniva. We, we uh, brought in, uh, he wasn't a councilman at the time, Darren Deskin, uh, other business uh, members that we know and trust and, um, you know, there were some concerns in its operations in the past, and I don't believe there's any concerns today, so that's good. Um, we can, as staff, I can certainly go back to their board and make a formal request that um, we can talk to the county in regards to the charter and whether we get an appointee or not. Um, I can tell you the process isn't too complicated. Usually um, the city asks the county uh, executive's office. They're the ones that make the appointees, and it's confirmed by the full county, so it's really not our choice, but we certainly can... Um, raise that question and, and make sure and or continue to monitor that board and if it ever feels like it's getting low and we don't have representation we can certainly get it done through the county yeah. so, so the I just don't know if I can yeah. control their board no, so, so the cemetery association is a 501 C it is now yeah, yeah 501 so C3 so C that's good C1 C3 C4 C3 C1 no one like sorry <laughs> Well, anyway, it's it's a not it's profit. No, no it's just an association. Thirteen. Yeah, thirteen. So um, they, and until the city d takes over the cemetery association, we really don't have a lot of say in it. I think you know there's cooperation on the the board. Um, we did help with getting some of the board members approved because that's one of one of the things that the county, Will County Board Executive has to do is approve the appointments. Now, if there's any issues regarding irregulation, you know, uh, or any reg irregularity regarding the, the control and the maintenance of the plots, we can take formal legal actions to do that. But until we do that, um, we can't force them to have city representation. But we do currently do have, um, you know, an eye in what they're doing right now. I've been so, thinking about this a little, Jonathan, since you mentioned it to me. The other day, uh, I would. Um, it w when we got involved in this, the only reason we got involved, uh, we try not to get involved in people's 501c3s. Nobody wants the city nosing around in their stuff. This became, and, and the only reason why we had any 
saying it was because they wanted they were open to getting some property and it's like okay if you guys want a property we're happy to give it it's really a small piece it's nothing ever is going to happen there except for us cutting the grass forever so it made sense um and so that's how it happened there's a part of me that's like the sooner we can not have our nose in somebody else's 501c3 i think the better because we certainly wouldn't want us in to give something back foundation we sure. want a representative over there john and they don't like the way you're working it and so i think that when you give us land though yeah but i think <laughs> that well we took land from you it was our responsibility right. so it's it's i think that it's not like we're given like uh you know the back 40 or the 180 acres of chevron it's like a tiny spot i mean it's not like it's a huge investment i feel like um with yeah, that, yeah. I, the one question i have and i and i i get yeah, darren officially can't answer a question i don't know why but i'm not asking you to de deliberate i'm just looking for some answers <laughs> and that is like with the amount of new property and the amount of plots you could sell like there, there's probably an estimated time before it finally is not um viable anymore it might be five years ten years like how much time does this extra plot buy that they can sell before they become you know no longer have income generation you got any thoughts on that like is it five years ten years that's okay to answer the question you know i i i'll, I'll answer your questions um can we wait until after the vote and then i can go ahead and and give an update how about yeah. that but the answer yeah. is I do have the answer to your question all right because I'm like I, I don't know if it's necessary to be that involved the people that are on the board now will probably ride it out until the end anyway you know um, there's also discussion about trying to maybe get more property there and um, hopefully maybe if they get additional from the other property owners then they're off to the races to do and again but growth. that's not but that's not us. that's not us and I and I try to I've hated when this board and this is I'm sorry John because I was thinking about this afterwards I was like ah oh, there's been times when this council has tried to get into other people's business that it just it, we, we try to stay out as yeah. much as possible and I, I, I don't I'm not proposing oversight I'm proposing awareness like just can we be updated yeah. if yeah. things start to get into a bad way before it's where it was when there's right. you know we have that ability together. today because we have members we know right right um, if that member starts to erode I can contact the county executive's office and we can certainly request additional membership and yeah. that can be a staff it can be elected it can be anybody the council chooses and, and, and that's, that's where fine. my question for Darren is, I, I don't think it's all that much longer anyway. Like, I don't think it's like, dude, we got to be worried about this 15 years from now. I, I just don't think it's going to last that long, man. I think it's going to. It may be. So. Uh, with, the, with the amount of people that are being cremated instead of buried, you can put a whole lot more urns on a particular piece of land than you can mm -hmm. um, a coffin. And so I, I think with that piece of land, you guys do buy a lot of time. Um, I don't know if it's 50 years. Could be 50 years. Yeah. That's asking a lot of Darren to, yeah. to last another 50 years. <laughs> well, I always say a voice of change is a voice of charge. You will be my yeah. appointee to uh, the cemetery board. I, why don't we call, a, the, yeah, the we'll call the vote? And because obviously we're going off. Yeah, this actually um, doesn't. Um, have, it, it, it doesn't have yeah. to do with the special, special use. use. So yeah. um, that's fine. So we'll we'll go ahead and do a roll call, and then we can discuss that further at new business so all right much we'll do a roll call then okay uh, pew yes harris yes mcdonald is absent gologly yes deskin is abstained bergbauer yes uh um uh, bartleson yes and Sabin. yes motion passes all right well seeing as that was the last thing for new business darren bring us um so um sonny can i speak freely now okay yes all right so uh, it's good, Jonathan, great question. So um, to give you an idea, over the past year, um, it was in April of last year that um, 10 people were appointed by the um, 
uh, County Executive Jennifer Trant and approved by the County Board. Uh, five, five members of the board were from the City of Lockport. Those members, uh, those members were uh, myself um, and uh, Brian Smith, former alderman, uh, uh, Ron Keneva, who spent 30 some years as our city attorney, um, Ron Liff, who uh, is a, an insurance uh, man here, and, and he has been acting as our um, accountant and uh, was just um, uh, uh, elected our um, treasurer for the next two years. Um, Jerry Edelman, who is the CEO of Open Lands, Open Lands, and Jerry was appointed 40 years ago by Ronald Reagan to actually create this organization. He's been CEO, and and um, and Jerry has um, Jerry's sixth generation, so he's got five generations buried there. And um, and then there's there's five five members of the. Uh, Lockport Historical Society, uh, Sandy Vasco, um, uh, Brian Conroy, who's, uh, who's the, the association's vice president, um, um, and three other people. Okay, two, 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 two people have done in Wilmington, their husband and wife, and um, for a life of me, I can't think of the last person's name. So over the last year, what we've done here is um, we, we, when we first met in May of last year, it's, we had no idea what, what we had. What we knew was is that there, from a um, financial standpoint, uh, there, was, um, there were uh, issues. And the issues was um, this uh, cemetery was incorporated in 1853, it was it was at the same time that Central Square, uh, the, the canal accord or um, canal operators, whatever was, they were called, um, created three open space areas in the city of Lockport. One was public landing, one was this spot where we're on right now, and one one was a cemetery, and it operated um, and it was on on 10 acres, and so it took uh, 170 years to fill up the cemetery. There's about 6,000 people um, buried there. Um, so uh, this, this new piece of land is, and so, so what we did is, is we, had to, we, we had to review the investments, uh, a very, very poor investment strategy going back decades, you know, where they would get 0.2% uh, a yearly return on their money. Um, when you know there should be after you would think after 170 years there would be a couple of million dollars in a perpetual care fund and there was 60,000 and it wasn't me nobody did uh, nobody um, absconded with any money that we could find um, it's just that it was just poor investments okay we're, we're rectifying that we're going from one investment company um, to another another investing firm and uh, we're going to be a little bit more hands-on. Another thing that happened over the past, you know, the fire department took care of the cemetery for probably 50 years. And um, that was who was on the board in all these years. Well, um, they all died off. And um, so um, it, it's, it's, been a, it's been a huge learning curve for me. It's a completely different language um, that, that, I, that I had, you know, why would I have known anything about it? Um, so what we learned was is, is that we had run out of graves, okay? Um, it's obvious that there are um, graves there, empty graves there, um, but we have to, um, first thing we had, the ledger books, I mean, it, we're literally stuck in 1853 how they do things. Uh, the uh, the uh, computer program that they have because you have to record uh, they bought a, uh, they have to record things um, uh, with the Illinois um, Illinois Cemetery Oversight Department uh, and um, first time I saw the computer program it was it was DOS circa 1990 you know I didn't even dude, know. dude. you gotta you gotta you gotta roll this up man. 
I don't, I don't, well, how, so, many, how many years? So, 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 so we're looking. So, so we're looking at a. So we're looking at approximately 250 graves. Okay, we've been averaging 24 burials a year. Okay, um, but we are going to add something called a columbarium. A columbarium is a, 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 a mausoleum for uh, urns. A columbarium, uh, you know, we're looking at you can have many different uh, uh, amounts of. Um, uh, niche, niches and so so hundred so we buy a columbarium and uh, they're about twenty five thousand dollars and we could go ahead and it could be for seventy five to hundred years and then if we go ahead and um, if we can acquire another half acre or an acre um, it could give us it could give us 100, 120 right. years so so in other words there's a long time foreseeable future long, long time, past long time. and while we have we have good people in there now yeah. who we trust we have to be on there they'll probably be on there for some time but not 75 years um but i uh yeah yeah, yeah. and we have the ability to <laughs> put appointees on there and i would be you know i'm glad you voted it through right. because you wouldn't want a quick pro quo like oh we're gonna give you this land and if you give us the thing you know yeah. just need to move on I wanted to get back to the old days where everybody talked for 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you want to flip the meetings. <clears throat> yeah. All right, man. I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor. <laughs>